amen, the religious spirit. Uh, and uh, this, of course, came out of when, whenever you, um, this is the spirit that, that was so powerful that this is what killed Jesus. This killed Christ. He couldn't even cast that out of these because the religious spirit can't be, uh, can't be dealt with because they don't know that it's a spirit. Amen. So if you study Jesus' life, he was constantly battling the religious, the people who thought they knew God, right. and they didn't like his brand of ministry. Amen. And so they followed him, trying to set him up to accuse him, which they finally accused him by getting someone to lie and say he blasphemed uh, against God, but he didn't. And they finally killed the Christ. They killed this, this religious spirit, killed Jesus Christ. It killed God. Do you understand that? So it's a very powerful foe. And we're going we're gonna to explore it today because I think we all have a little bit of this in us. I think all of us have some form of religion in us. Amen. And uh, uh, it's not a good thing. When I was growing up, I thought when they said religion, I thought that was a good thing. And then I started understanding what religion was. And I said, our religion is man's way to God, not God's way to man. So it means man's rules and what he regulated and what he added to God and, 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 and his way of being saved versus God's way, which was just grace, uh, faith, uh, grace through faith. Uh, Y'all heard what I'm saying? So let's look at Luke. Uh, well, before we get to Luke, let me, let me give you a little bit of, uh, little bit of my notes here. Um, now, a religious spirit uh, is a spirit, or when I say spirit, I mean when you see this operating in people's life, you know, it, you can call it a spirit or mentality or, you know, mode of operation or attitude or whatever. But basically, uh, this spirit manifests in people's lives, uh, and, 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 the, and the number one characteristic is self-righteousness. In other words, this person would think that they are right. Very hard to, t to deal with these people. You can't tell them anything. They are unteachable. They, 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 have, they are beyond teaching. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And that's why when you see how, even though Jesus kept confounding the wisdom of the, law, of the scribes and Pharisees, they kept coming. They wasn't learning, even though he was teaching them. He was trying to tell them uh, uh, the truth, but they couldn't learn. They was beyond teaching. All they, all they saw all they used true all they used information was only to bring men into bondage they were trying to figure ways to trip him up instead of listening to the king of kings tell them about the kingdom of god Amen. but they didn't care about that because they were threatened by him because they had control of the people through legalism are you hearing what i'm saying and so uh, uh um um the objective uh, uh uh of a of a religious spirit it's control. Say control. It's, it's, it's mainly about control. Um, when people begin to grow in God or try to uh, learn something more than the same uh, oatmeal that they've been receiving all these years and they come up with, start trying to go deeper, uh, many times a religious spirit will come and say, you're going to lose your mind or you're getting too deep or we don't, our family don't do that or we don't believe that, or we are Baptists, or we are Methodists, or we are apostolic, or we don't. See, that's just a religious spirit that is coming up to, 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 to bind upon you. There are rules and regulations to keep you from going further. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? And so these, this is how religious spirits talk. They talk in terms of tradition and ritual and ceremony. Are you hearing what I'm saying? to make people feel that they need to have some kind of work. They need to work, uh, 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 they need to, 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 to add something to their salvation. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Now, so if, if now we know control, say control. Now control is basically the definition of witchcraft. Witchcraft, the definition of witchcraft is just basic control. I'm trying to force my will upon somebody by using demonic power. That's what witchcraft is, okay? Or even using soulless power, or even using works of the flesh. Because the Bible says even the work of the flesh, witchcraft is a work of the flesh also. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But basically, it means to try to control you, try to push my will upon you. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So a religious spirit operates with this spirit of witchcraft, 
trying to control people. Now, many of us, if we, if we think about our families, uh, we can see that operate. Somebody's always trying to control. And whenever somebody tries to get outside the box or do something different, this thing jumps up and says, no, that's not how we do it. No, uh, you need to do it the way we did it. You see now where people, no, don't get married. Uh, no, you know, it's, it's like, it's, it's, it's like, you know, uh, keep everybody, you know, you got to go to this church. No, you got to, you can't go over there. You can't, you know, that's not what we believe. That's not what we listen to. Say amen. amen. And so it, 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 is, it is trying to control the outcome based upon the fact that they're getting something from this person's submission. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? In other words, I'm gaining something from you by you being in submission to me. And when somebody comes to disturb that submission, then my, my knife come out and I begin to slice and try to d defame and murder whoever comes in in into your life because it's threatening my control over you. Amen. That's why you see that they, 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 that's the reason why they killed Christ because he came and threatened their control. The Bible says that the Jews were so afraid of the Pharisees because they were scared they were going to get kicked out of the synagogue. So they were scared to go against the Pharisees and the Pharisees had ultimate control which led to them having ultimate prominence, prestige, money. Say amen. They, they lorded over the people as they were the people's law, uh, lords, not leaders. Are you understanding what I'm saying? They wasn't examples. They were, they, they were like lords. That's why Jesus, Paul said don't lord over the people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, so, so this is what the religious spirit seeks to do, to get up above people to lord over them and bring them under control into submission. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They're very threatened by outside forces. Anybody that can come into your life that can bring a new perspective. You remember I was telling y'all a story last week about the, uh, the, 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 the girl that was watching her mother cut the bottom off the ham. And the grandmother and, and the girl didn't understand why they was cutting the bottom off the ham. And the, the mama said, well, that's what your grandma used to do. And then and the girl started the tradition <laughs> to cut the bottom off the ham. That's religion. It's just, just a tradition. You know, just a way of operation, and uh, and finally they got to the grandmom, and the grandmom finally said, "Well, it's because my pot was too little." Amen. That's that's you, you see what I'm saying. Yeah. But they had it, but it was a tradition right. that they that it wasn't based upon anything, but yet because this is what we do, I expect everybody to do it. Right. Amen. Are, are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Amen. And because we are so see see in the black community, this is what has destroyed our communities: religion. This religious spirit that, 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 that because all we know about religion is civil rights. So all we know about is petitioning the government, trying to get more money for a program that didn't work in the first place. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When somebody comes from the outside and saying, talk about self-empowerment, self-improvement, you see all of these people come out like, no, we don't need to talk about what people can do for they self. We need to go and check, beg the government to give us more. Dude, nobody want to talk about this. And that all comes from religion. It's a religious spirit that we got these couple of reverends that run around and incite, uh, uh, incite uh, 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 racism constantly to get more money from the government. And we still never come up because coming up means we got to break from that old system and do for self. Is this making any sense to anybody? Y'all hearing what I'm saying? So every so often they got to get they got to get a racial issue to stir us up to divide us again, and we go right back in this religious civil rights. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And we never come up because we don't understand that 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 somebody is using it as a means of control. They control how we vote, how we think, what we buy, where we live. Why? Because we we don't understand that there's a system. Of religion over us. Y'all are y'all there or not there? Have you ever wondered why no matter who's our president, no matter who's no matter how much money comes in the black community, we never come up. We still are the same. We never get no further. We still have we still the highest HIV, the highest in prison, the highest drug cases, the highest in jail. The, come on. We the highest dying, the drive buyers, the gang members. Why? I know we are we just bad? Are we just terrible people? No, there's a religious system in place that pacifies us to keep us un under control, that tells us we're victims. 
I heard somebody saying something about, remember that thing with Donald Sterling came out, and they were saying, well, the real problem is this thing up in Chicago, uh, house uh, discrimination. They said it was housing discrimination. You know, all them about young kids, young, young gang members and kids get killed up there. And, and, and they said because when they did this gentrification, which means they just took black people, moved them out of the, where they live, and moved them somewhere else, they moved them in other gangs, moved in other gang territory. And so there's just constant shoot, shootouts, if you go and just look at it, and it's terrible, right? So this guy got on there talking about what well, Donald Sterling was one of, has a lot of property, and he's one of the type of people who wouldn't rent to black people, and that's one of the problems because the black people can't get out of the hood in order to go live in better areas for their children. Well, that sounded good until I, st that I thought about it. I said, where you live don't make you kill folk. Just because I live in the hood don't mean I got to go blow his brains out. They may, they may, you mean to tell me the guy that shot the guy and the guy out there getting shot, they the victim? Come on, think, think about what I'm telling you. Because that religious system has, has, has made us victims because it keeps reminding us of, the, of, of, of what happened but never give a solution to get over it. Can y'all understand what I'm saying? So they was so so this guy's gonna make all of these people victims of housing discrimination, and I'm saying they not making you spray paint on buildings. Why you Negro spray paint everything up? That looks terrible. Amen. Housing discrimination don't make you rob nobody. Amen. Housing discrimination don't make you rape nobody. Amen. Are you? Do you see what I'm saying? But this religious system, because you go to church, the preachers ain't rebuking them. The preachers ain't rebuking them boys. They ain't saying nothing about why they dying. They ain't dying because there ain't no government programs. They ain't dying because the schools are the way they are. They ain't dying because there ain't nothing out there. They ain't dying because of drugs or nothing. They dying because they disobeying God. It's called rebellion. The oldest sin, it happened to Cain. He wanted to do what he wanted to do, and he paid the price. If you make a victim out of them, then they are not responsible for their action. Y'all want to talk about this. See, black folk, man, we just got to, we don't understand. We've been bamboozled by 60 years of religion. Religious spirits that crept into the church and used the preacher to silence him on issues that will cause us to come out from up under this democratic republican system and start doing for ourselves. How is it we had schools and we had businesses and we had wealth until we got uh, uh, integrated? Once civil rights came along, we lost our stores. We lost, y'all don't want to talk about this. Our people had land. What happened? We got integrated. And we thought we were getting something. And all it did was make us leave what we had thinking we're going to get something better. Say amen. And they move right on in to them black areas. And now those black areas is how to live in them areas than it is to live in, in the suburb. It's called gentrification. Moving Negroes around. <laughs> That's why they turn these projects down. We ain't figured it out. And we still going to heaven on a little rowboat. Still rolling the boat ashore. Still sweet cherries is swinging low. Say man. Say religion. This is all done by religion. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Can I go further? So the object of religion, one of the objectives is control. Are y'all there? Controlled by legalistic views and private interpretation of scripture. I can add another thing there. Also, it controls by keeping you ignorant of scripture. And are we not? How, one of the worst things I have ever heard about us is that if you want to hide something from us, put it in a book. We don't read. We don't study. Y'all, you know, I want to talk. Once we get out of school, book learning is over. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So the, 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 the religious system of our churches 
has played upon that. You may think I'm not, you, I'm going to prove what I'm saying. Trust me, I'm a, I'm, I got your number. I'm going to prove this. Whenever you see preaching, you never, if you really hear preaching, most of the time you hear that preaching, and ah, uh, and ah, uh, you don't remember what they said. You don't remember. They don't go through the word and go scripture and show you. They get one text and they preach and read it and then they done. Because knowing the word is not important. I mean, they say, they think. Because in order to control you, the same way the Roman Catholic Church wrote the Bible in a language, Latin, that nobody else could read but the priest, so they could never know what God was saying. So the way to control you is keep you from knowing this. Because when you start actually reading it for yourself, you find out, oh, oh. I didn't know the Bible said that. I be talking to people start start naming scripture. I don't I didn't know I didn't know the Bible said that. But they've been going to church all their life. What happened? They've been dumbed down. The same way the children in the education system have been dumbed down. They graduate and can't read. We got all this graduation going on, but I guarantee you, half of them children that just graduated, you sit them down and take a test, they wouldn't know how to pass it. Amen. Not the test they coach them through. I'm talking about the real test. Why? Because it was purposely done down for con dumbed down for control. Right. It's a control. Did you know illiteracy is a control mechanism? Yeah. The same way poverty is a control mechanism. That's how you can control people. Why do you think the slave masters didn't want us to read when we was in slavery? They knew if he's if he slave get educated, you can't keep us educated man a slave. He gonna think up a way to get free. Amen. We won't kill the mind, make the body strong. That's why all you see in our videos is body and flesh and, and the stuff that work. Yeah, get your body strong and sexy, and, but don't, don't have nothing up here. Don't think. Oh, uh, y'all. Uh, it's a religious spirit. Say amen. And so most of the time when we think about church, that's what we think first. And so we have been created into victim. Let me go on. Let me go on. So the, the first objective of a religious spirit is controlled by legalistic views and private interpretation of scripture. Number two, the second way, uh, the second objective of the religious spirit is conformity. Conformity. Make everybody else the same. Make everybody alike. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Kill uh, uniqueness. If you kill uniqueness, you can't see gifts of God. Do, do y'all do hear what I'm saying? You don't, this is what they're doing in the school. Give them all ribbons. Give everybody a star. So nobody feels left out. No, you're killing the ones that are blessed to excel. You're killing, do you see what I'm saying? You're killing, uh, uh, um, uh, you're making them all mediocre. I'm out here running track, and I'm the fastest, but you get a ribbon too. Well, then what am I the fastest for? The, even the Bible says, don't we run to receive a prize? The Bible even says that if you're going to run a race, you run it because you're going to receive something. Well, if we all receive a prize, it ain't no winners. So you kill my motivation. So that's why these kids don't care about nothing. They mediocre. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? They ain't teaching them about nothing but sex, homosexuality. That's all they know about is learning about sex. They don't know nothing else. I was watching this morning crazy stuff on uh, that morning show. Uh, Six-year-old kids, transgender. A six-year-old child is telling the, the, the parent, I feel like I'm not a little girl. So how does a six-year-old child know what their sex is? They haven't even had sex. You do you know you don't know what sex you are till you have sex for real? I mean, I mean, you know what you got, but you don't know what wires are what. Do you understand? Do you understand? You may think you're a tomboy till somebody ring your bell. You say, I'm a girl. 
Now what if we what if we interfere with that? What if what if what if we start? What if you too you too young to know what you are? You haven't had enough experience. You have nothing to compare it to. Do, do you understand what I'm trying to say? When you get you some life experience, you realize, oh, okay, I was just going through something. But these kids, are, they, they allowing a child. And I was just looking at the mother like, this, she needs to be choked. I was like, you allowing a child to make a decision that's going to change them for the rest of their life? And, and you... you uh, you know what they're going to go through? And all they was worried about was a child being bullied for being a trans. That child ain't being bullied. The other kids are looking at something that's not normal. And they don't understand it's not normal. So they, they, they saying stuff to the child because it's like, this ain't normal. And the child is taking it as because everybody, if you don't, if I don't agree totally with you, then I'm, and I'm hating on you. I'm hurting you. But other kids, right now, if you take one of these little kids right here, one of these little kids, and, and Pastor Steve come here with a dress on and lipstick, they're going, it ain't normal. Now, 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 what, now what we doing is we going to convince this child, this is normal, child. A child's mind without nobody telling them will say, it don't look right. But we were actually, we are actually forcing, abusing, mentally abusing children with, with, with massive confusion to accept what their own little minds know is wrong. Uh, can we go on? Let's take conformity. Everybody must be the same. Say be the same. And uh, God, God makes us, the Bible says that every, every hair on your head is numbered. You are wonderfully, uniquely and wonderfully made, fearfully and wonderfully made. Everybody has a different uh, handprint and a different eye print and a different, you know, he made everybody individual because he likes variety. He likes, he likes his creation. He's a creative God. Do y'all know, understand that? He's a creative God. He, he loves his creation. Amen. So he made you the way he did because that's the way he liked that. Right. Say amen. amen. But this religious spirit seeks to form us and mold us into this same cosmos where we all are the same, think the same, look the same. And it kills, it kills the individualness, the individuality. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Let's go. Uh, and, the, and, the, and the last objective here is it counteracts the word of God. In other words, the goal is to make the word of God, is to, to nullify the word of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And this is where we are in our generation. I'm telling you, this is thick on us. This is a thick thing. It's not, I ain't making this up. But this is thick on our, on our, on our especially us black people. Because we only believed in church. Until we got this black guy up, it's this half guy, he ain't all black, this half breed guy. Until we got him up there, we didn't even believe in politics. <laughs> and y'all know we did not believe in politics. We didn't know who to vote for, just vote Democrat. Everybody, check, 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 check. We didn't care, we didn't know no issues, we didn't know nothing about no political nothing. We just voted like they told us to. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You think it ain't religious? But where did that come from? It came from the black church. When, the, when, the, when they would go in the black church and pay preachers to come in there and talk about what they're going to do for the black community, they used to do it. They do it every year. They go to some of the biggest black churches in the city with the most influential congregation, and they, start, and they give them a grant and give them family life money and build their buildings and do all of that and, then, and, 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 and persuade the people to vote their platform. Both of them do it. Republicans do it and the Democrats do it. That's what they do. And whatever, whatever the preacher hints, listen, whatever he hints is what we do. Now, what y'all don't understand is I'm going to show you the danger of religion. You know, the founder of Planned Parenthood, the woman called Margaret Sanger, which was a eugenicist. Eugenics, is, eugenics was uh, a scientific uh, theory to exterminate study it 
exterminate all blacks, all black folk and feeble-minded people. It was a, it, her name is Margaret Sanger. Look it up. This is the theory they got from Hitler. Hitler got it from Hitler got it from Darwin. Darwinism is actually eugenics. It means to destroy those that are not fit. And they felt like if people that was in poverty and were not fit to live, they should be destroyed by the folks that were stronger. So that's where the term survival of the fittest come from. Like the law of the jungle means kill or be killed. That's what it means. So they said because blacks were, of course we were in poverty. We was in slavery. But because we were in poverty, they felt like we was only going to be a burden on the government. So they was finding ways to sterilization and abortion. And it's called eugenics. Study it out. And so this woman came up with this idea and said, we know that we're targeting Black, the blacks, the Negroes, that's what they call, just called Negroes. And, but we don't want them to know that we're actually targeting them. So we need to get us some black preachers. Black preachers. See, no matter, see, see, we don't, see, we, we, we just want to talk about the white people. But they use the black preacher to not discuss, to not say nothing about it. No, he didn't preach to go do it. He didn't say not to. And they said we will pay the black preachers that are looking for prestige and honor and they will push it on their people and won't say nothing. And have you noticed why the black church has never stood on against abortion? Did you ever see? Y'all want to talk about this. When we know that, 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 that one out of every two black children get aborted, it all came through religion. We are 12% of the population, 12%, 12%, but we have more than half of all the abortions. You, you, uh, that number don't even make sense. Amen. That number do not, do y'all not understand what I'm saying? That means if you got 100 people in here, 12 people are having all the abortions out of 100 people. Do y'all not understand that's a, that's a crazy number? That means that, 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 that 12 is targeted. That's why they put the plan, all these abortion clinics in minority areas. Amen. Say amen. amen. And they, dis they uneducated us. Y'all don't want to talk about this. Amen. Women going to the doctor, pregnant, they uneducated us with a lie. That ain't no baby girl. That ain't nothing yet. It ain't even no child yet. Amen. That's what they lied. That's what they lied. Amen. Now they got ultrasounds that can see everything. Amen. Y'all, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. They told us it wasn't no baby. It's just tissue. It's just a mass, a clump. But the Bible says, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Before you was even in the womb. Oh. Before you was in the womb, I knew you. You were spirit before you were flesh. All I did was put, all I did was wrap Flesh around spirit. The spirit was a breath. What Adam received. That's all you got is a breath. That's why if that breath was gone, you'd be dead. It's one breath. Your spirit that, that, that dropped in flesh. Are y'all? Is this the, So that lie created a. A, a, a bad understanding in our community where we have now killed off 50 million. I said it. And it all happened through religion. And, and, and have you ever heard anybody preach one word about it? No. Now, how is it that our preachers, just show you religious spirit, always vote for the party that was for this Plan Parenthood and for the abortion and for eugenics. Thank black folk. Thank. See, I'm trying to break that religious spirit. How is it that black people vote for the party that was started by the Ku Klux Klan? The Democratic Party used to be the Dixiecrats, the Southern Cats that was for eugenics and 
industrialization and destruction of the black people. And somehow they tricked us to start voting for them. And what do they want? Control. Managing us. Control. 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 I said it. Think about it. Think, just think about it. How do we switch? We, was, we used to be Republicans. Republican Party was the one that actually helped to free us. Y'all don't even know that. I'm not neither one of them. I don't believe in either party. I'm just telling you. But see, we start talking about politics. People get tight because they, they see because this is deep in us. Our, poli our, po our politics is religious. That is true. That is true. I grew up, I heard, when I first heard politics, vote Democrat, nothing, don't say nothing else about it. Right. I never knew why. That is true. That is true. I started studying and said, wait a minute, these guys that came up with the, these were who was lynching us. Right. When they took off the sheet, they just went into corporate America yeah. and started putting institutional racism. Yeah. Like the prison industrialist complex. Where they start seeing how many black people can read at, third, at the age of three, at the third grade age. And they building prisons based on that. And then giving, giving poor rural community, white communities money by housing black folks in their community. That's why you got over a million black men in jail. We ain't figured out what's going on. Well, it's, they stopped from that type of racism to another style. But we ain't figured that out. That's why we still going to jail. Let me get on, Lord. But all of this came through religion. It's a religious spirit. Y'all there or not there? We got people who say they reverence. Reverence. Reverence who's supposed to know this book. I said it. We got people who say they reverence. They go get these guys every time something happens in the black community. They go get reverence. Who's supposed to know the Bible? Teach you the Bible and, and live by the Bible. Say amen. And they and they 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 arm and arm with the homosexual movement. That's an oxymoron. How can you be for that when the Bible tells you uh, you should not lie with a man as you lie with a woman, Reverend? Amen. But we don't care as long as they talking about civil rights. As long as they talking about getting us more uh, a little bit more on uh, a welfare check a little bit. Y'all, I, I said it. A little bit more assistance. That's all they talking about. Yeah, ain't y'all ever asked that? I asked that question. Wait a minute, how are you gonna be for them when the Bible tells you that this is not even the way you ain't supposed to even be fooling with this? Amen. Now, so we don't change civil rights to gay rights. Amen. So when black people was trying to come up, now they took our movement. Oh, I'm move. I'm let me move on. Let me move on. Let me move on. Let me move on. Y'all there or not there? Y'all there or not there? I want to help you think to think. It's not all about shouting and just getting that good feeling and hitting that organ. No, think about what I'm saying. We got to learn. They beating us because we don't know nothing. We keep doing the same thing. What, you think going to get something different? Politics was never for black people. That's why we ain't got nothing. It never was, never was for us. Politics was to, to protect white investment. <laughs> Did you know the police was not never for you? Did you ever know the police force was formed by the Ku Klux Klan? To protect white investment? To protect white property? That's what it was for. They didn't have a police force amongst themselves. They didn't police themselves. I mean, they policed their own self with their own guns. They formed a police force after slavery. Amen. Militia was formed because for the blacks to protect white property. So it wasn't even no police till, they, till we got free and they got threatened that we might take some from them. Amen. Study your history. Amen. That's why the laws don't work, work against us because we don't know the law. They whooping us with law. Uh, let me move on. Let me go on. Can I go on? Say religious. Because religious is about legalism. It's all about laws. Legalism. Let me go on. Now, look at Luke chapter 13. Let me bring this back into the church now. Are y'all there? Can we talk? Are y'all mad yet? I ain't done enough. I ain't done enough. When your eyes are open and you see the truth, it's very difficult. You don't, you, you, your, your tolerance of foolishness is low. <laughs> My tolerance for foolishness is low. Because I see foolishness is our real enemy. It's, in, it's an enemy. Look at this. Verse, look at verse 11. I mean, verse 10. Verse 10. And he was 
Luke 13 and 10. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and bowed herself and bowed and was bowed, bowed, to, bowed together and could no, and could in no wise lift herself up. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. Say happy day. Happy day. Ain't that a beautiful thing? Yes. 18 years Amen. bound. Matter of fact, study it out. Another scripture says she didn't went to everybody and they all took her money. Amen. She went to doctors and everybody, you know, people say they're going to do something for her and they just took her money. Are y'all there? And Jesus just says immediately, woman, thou loose from thine infirmity. Verse 13, he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight. And what did she do? Glorified God. She glorified God, right? Now, that would be like, now, anybody that saw that, so it seemed like they would be rejoicing. And, you know, that's when we get the hucker bucking. And we come on, we get to dancing and shouting and praising God. And, 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 and you know, that's a, that's a great miracle. But shouldn't that bring joy? Say amen. amen. Shouldn't the community be happy? I'm trying to show y'all the real enemy, the real fight. Are y'all there? Amen. Just like when you got saved, shouldn't they, wouldn't they, shouldn't they have been happy? Why wasn't that, well, shouldn't everybody rejoice? You was, you was terrible. Shouldn't they be happy you finally got right? You got off drugs? You walked out of that crazy relationship? Come on. Talk about that. Think about what I'm trying to say. You no longer at risk. People ain't wait, uh, wait, uh, uh, sitting up uh, praying over you and, 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 and walking the floor for you. People ain't running down to the jail for you no more. Come on, talk to me. You ain't in no other woman's bed no more. Your wife know where you are now? Shouldn't that be a time of rejoicing? I'm trying to show y'all this religious spirit. Because you think that people will be happy when God blesses you. You think people will be happy when God saves you. You think everybody will rejoice when God does something new in your life. And I'm telling you, this religious spirit doesn't have the reaction that you, gonna, that, that you want. You're going to be surprised. Verse 14 says, and the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation. Got indignant. Forget the fact that this woman just got blessed. This is how, look how cold the religious spirit is. How cold hearted it is. You didn't follow our law, our ritual. I don't care if you did get free down there at that church. That ain't how we believe. Now you was laying in the, you were laying over there with a heroin needle in your arm. And they was just shaking their head like they're gonna show kill themselves out here. Now you're in that church. And you got joy. And you're talking about you're free. And now they get indignant. Y'all don't want to talk. Don't, it's a religious spirit. You remember you was a whoremonger? Oh, running around with whores among us? <laughs> Say amen. Come on, we all were. Such were some of us. Uh, how, are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Then you go to the family, to the people, say, I'm going to get married. What? <laughs> Why don't you just live with them for a while? Why don't you just try it out? I thought you would be happy I'm doing what's right. But a religious spirit would always jump up and try to rob you of the, of the, of the joy of your breakthrough. Oh, Y'all heard what I'm saying? I don't run with them. I don't run with them. I don't want them around me. If you can't be rejoicing when God do something in my life, please stay away from me. I will tell people, get away from me. If I can't tell you what God is doing without you telling me all the stuff God's doing for you to, to, to combat or compete with what, get away from me. Is that not how we are? In a, tell me, is that not how we Is that not how we are? You be like, you know, I like, you know, these, you know, I just bought these shoes. That, oh, yeah, you know, I got something like at home. 
I asked you if you had none. I said, I, do you like the ones I got? Oh, girl, I wouldn't. Uh, yeah, your hair look all right. That's when you know they got that spirit bad. They can't, I mean, it's hard for them to even halfway rejoice. They can't even crack a smile. Just. That's how they look when they ever said religious spirit. They can't, they can't, they can't, they can't give it your whole smile. Well, that, yeah, that dress, yeah, the dress look all right, but if they, they should have did, they should have took it. What you now? You gonna turn into a seamstress? You gonna critique the dress now? Why can't you just say it's all right? It looks good. See, a religious spirit won't let you have any blessing without them having to put their little two cent. Y'all don't worry what I'm saying. Is it y'all there? Let me keep going here. So this ruler guy, he done answered with indignation because that Jesus healed, had healed on the Sabbath day. You know that day they say you're supposed to be resting and you're supposed to do nothing but just go to church on Saturday all day. Amen. They don't skip all kinds of scriptures, but they just still, you know, you got you to gotta fight them every now and then. Amen. That's a religious spirit. When Paul said, don't look, don't prefer one day over another day. Every day the Sabbath. Yeah. Every day the Sabbath day. Every day you worship God every day. Church is not just the, it, church is not the extent of the ending of your worship. When you leave here, you go worship. On Monday you worship, on Tuesday you worship. On Wednesday you worship, on Thursday you worship. You don't stop worshiping him because you ain't in church. My relationship ain't with church. I am the church. So it ain't just about no Sabbath day Amen. it's every day Amen. that's uh, you might as well just do the lint, the lint thing remember no they thought about lint you can go out and just get all the seed out you want and then go fast well well ain't that a ain't that a wicked day you mean I, you mean tell me i go do everything i want bad and then i then after that i can put it all behind me no, we don't never. We don't. We don't. We don't have no time off. We got no time off from God. I don't take off. I don't take off. Cause Chris Brown coming, I don't take off. Cause Jay Z coming, I don't take off. Cause Beyonce's in town, I don't take off. Cause of Derby, I don't take off. Every day I worship God. This is a money. This is this is a full time thing. A part time job. Y'all hearing what I'm saying? Y'all know we take off. Black people, we break and we take off. When we will take off, we take off. We will take off. Jesus, I'm taking off this weekend. Jesus, I just want you to know, Jesus, this weekend, the barbecue, I'm taking off. Motorcycle ride, motorcycles are coming, I'm taking off. Motorcycle time, I'm taking off. I'm just telling you, Jesus. And we will tell Jesus, too. You know, I'm just, I'm just telling you, Jesus. Jesus, I'm just telling you, I'm this weekend, I'm taking off. And we'll take off. And Jesus, Jesus be right there like, dang, dude, dang. We would... Where that Sunday love? Oh, he looking for that Sunday love. Like, nah, I'll see you next Sunday. See you next time because I'm taking off. It's a religious spirit. Y'all, I'm telling you it's a religion. I'm telling y'all. It is tradition. It is tradition. It's tradition. Y'all know it's tradition. That's how we grew up, and that's why we so messed up about God and his ways, because we saw God wrong. Amen. It was wrong. We didn't, see, we, didn't, we didn't see people who really live what they said. Yes. So we don't, really, we don't really believe it's possible. Oh. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I remember T.D. Jakes came here. We was out the fairgrounds on Derby. Amen. At one time on Derby, he came here. I remember that. And it, it was packed. I mean, it was I mean, packed. You no, know, we was everybody was dancing, shouting, and huckle bucking, and oh, hallelujah! And we was real deep and spiritual. The other preacher got up and said, "Well, y'all wait for a minute. You know, we gonna we gonna let you get to your derby. I know you got parties and stuff to go to. Why did y'all bring this man here? What did we get saved for?
for it. You just undone what you did. What you should have said was, now y'all go home now. Yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all go ahead and you know, I know y'all go ahead because I know I, I, we know I know the Earth Wind. I'll be at the Earth Wind Five concert. Well, then why did we get saved? Nobody want to talk about this. This is hard for us. Oh, because we have it's religious. It's religion in us, and religion says that you can don't take all tradition, don't take all that. You ain't got to do all that. And I beg to differ. It I, to me, it just depends on how deep you was bound. That's the way I look at it. See, I don't have no other crutch. I don't have no other outlet. So I have to go all the way with God because I ain't got no other support group. I have to go all the way. I was bound so deep that I did it takes this. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I didn't say I'm perfect. They say I don't make my mistakes. Yeah. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about I'm in my intention. Yeah. I'm intending to live it. Yeah. I'm trying. Yeah. And did you know that all, all he expects is effort? Yeah. He know you're going to mess up, but effort is important. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, he actually pays you for your effort. Yeah. Yeah. David said, Lord, judge me by the intention of my heart. Just not, I know I failed, but judge me by what I intended to do. I intended to live right. I messed up, but I intended. My motive was right about it. Oh, let me get on, y'all. Y'all ain't ready for this. Let me get on. Look at this here. Look at this. Verse 15. I got to get done. And it says, uh, the Lord answered him. Now, Jesus is an answer to man. The man doesn't come with this legalist view. That it don't take all that, and, and you shouldn't have did that on this day. And the Lord answered him and said, "You know, thou hypocrite." So let's talk about the outcome of religious of this religious spirit. Can we talk about the outcome? I got a few points. I'm done. The outcome of this religious spirit. No, is it, it, the outcome is like, say cold love. It's cold love. Think about how this woman is sitting here, got the greatest breakthrough and miracle that she would ever see in her life that they ever saw. And they didn't have no love for that at all. He, he would rather for the woman to stay in her infirmity than to break the legalist law. You tell me it ain't bondage to legalism that before you break the Sabbath, stay bound. Everybody don't want you to get healed. Everybody don't want you to be free. Everybody don't want you to be blessed. Everybody don't want you to stay married. Trust me, everybody don't want to see you with good in your life. There are some people that don't like it. They be right around you, be talking that good talk, but they don't like it. Because how dare you do it without me? How dare you get married without our approval? How dare you? How dare you? How dare you get on your feet without seeing a, without, without with us not getting no credit? That's what these Negroes want credit. They want credit. They want credit for your life. All the good stuff. Don't you know they don't help you enough? But when your celebrations come, they show up. When your celebration time, they show up looking for honor. Honor me. All the time you going through, you needed help when the, in, the, in the early stages, they wasn't there. But when your celebration time, honor me. Tell them what I've done for you. <laughs> no true concern or benevolence for others. They didn't care that the woman was, hit, was healed. They only cared about their influence and control. Second point of the outcome is legalism, hiding the true motive, which was pride. That was this. That was his ruler's true motive. It was pride and self-preservation. He was saying if people start getting healed, they ain't coming to me no more. They ain't going to need me. So that's why he was saying he was mad at Jesus for healing the woman. If you notice, they killed Jesus because they were scared they were going to lose the influence over the people. That's why they actually set him up to get killed. Uh, self-preservation. And this is the latter end of that verse when, it's, when he was talking about uh, talking about them six days, which men out of work. He wasn't. He didn't care nothing about that. It was the fact that I'm trying to preserve my own position. 
And many people will try to preserve their position in your life. You got to realize that. They're, everybody has a position in your life. Don't be no fool. You should have, they should. And you should know what that position is. Know what that position is. Know what, because I need to know what, don't be trying to do nothing. That, that ain't your position. That, you my friend. Don't speak. Don't talk about my husband. You my friend now. But you ain't got no reason. You don't say nothing about my husband. That ain't your position in my life. We just talk about work. Let's keep it on work. But when you start talking about my husband, you don't cross over to a position you ain't there. I got another friend for that. That's not your position. You know, people would do that, try to move up in positions that you ain't, you ain't invited them into that area. You hear what I'm saying? So asking you questions that's not on, wait a minute, this is not the level we on. You don't need to know what my, you don't need to know about what I went to the hospital for. We ain't on that level. What you, no, that's behind the scenes stuff. You're not behind, the, was you there? Was you there? Well, then you don't need to know. People have positions in your life. Understand that. If I didn't say nothing else, I said something. Everybody has a position. You need to know what position people play. That, that's how I know whether when it's time for you to go. <laughs> that's how I know when it's time for you to go, based on your position. God positions you in my life for now. We've accomplished what you came for. Now you can roll. No need of me trying to be loyal to you when it's time for you to go. That's why you're falling out with folk. It was time for them to go. People don't understand that. That's one thing me and my wife got down pat. It took us a while to figure that out, but we got it down pat. People get mad at us over it, but we got it down pat. The minute you get the weaver wobbling up, the position's up. Time for them to go. No need to try to, no, 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 no. Let's not, let's not go there. Let's not talk about how much we love each other. It's just time, baby. Let's just go your way. Go my way. It's easier than to sit here trying to prove to you and trying to, you know, it's not there no more. Learn how to cut stuff off. It's not there. It's gone. It's over. There'll be a person God used to help bring you up out of something. And if you don't understand, they go, their, their job was to bring you up out of it. If you, when you get up out of that and y'all, they get, you get to that point, you'll start to sense that, wait a minute, it's time for me to break off. Why? Because they got issues that if I keep staying around you, I'm going to inherit your garbage too. So I got to let you go. Don't mean I don't love you. Don't mean I'm not appreciative. Don't mean I'm not grateful. Let's go. Come on, think about it. Some of y'all know now. You got people that's, that's, that's draining you, killing your joy, killing your peace, calling you with this garbage because they haven't decided that they're going to come on up out of it. Come up out of it. That was for a season. You you train you you walk with people for a season. I do. <laughs> I do. You be dead trying to hold all these folk up. No. No. Matter of fact, let's switch it. I pulled you up, pull me up. I'm tired. <laughs> I will get tired on a Negro quick. I'll be getting tired. I tell people no, but they know I get tired. Because I learned that it's, it's, it's imperative for you not to think I'm Superman. I will make I will make sure you know my feet, my feet hurt. I'm tired. I don't feel like coming. What I'm telling you is, let's switch it up. I've done a lot for you. I don't work. I don't got you up. Now to switch it up. You can't keep. It can't keep you on one way street in this. Yeah, I want. It, religious folks will keep you giving and giving and giving and giving till you die. And then they'll look at you and say, "Why ain't you there for me? I'm dead." I died trying to help you. They don't think you love them till you're on your deathbed. And you, 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 let me know, I'm going to give you the mind hurt too. No. Say be tired sometime. Some of y'all got that bad. Y'all love, y'all want to be liked and want to, y'all have that performance oriented mentality where y'all want people to like y'all based on what y'all do so y'all act like y'all ain't tired. And you make, you, you give people a bad understanding of you, you got to let them know I'm tired. Now I cooked, I cooked that dinner that day. Today? Tired. I, I gave you a ride that month, this month. You got to find somebody else. I'm tired. Why? Because when you begin to tell people the truth and stop being phony and lying, 
They begin to understand, well, okay, well, let me help you. Let me, maybe I'll give you a few dollars. Oh, I ain't tired no more. <laughs> you know, a few dollars give you energy. <laughs> You'd be surprised how a few dollars will revive you. Like, oh, gas money, I ain't tired no more. But when you Negroes riding for free, I'm tired now. A few dollars will revive you. Because it's not the dollar, it's appreciation. Get tired of me if you want to be appreciated. Show your kids something. I'm tired. Yeah. George calls too much. I'm tired. Yeah. I need some shoes now. What you going to do for me? <laughs> Let's flip this. I don't feel like cooking. What you going to cook? <laughs> flip it. It causes appreciation. Yeah. Yeah. People use you if you don't get tired. <laughs> I'm going to move on. This last point here. I know we got you got leeches in your life. So people just keep on sucking the blood till you ain't got nothing left. You know, our loyalty to people is, is crazy. We got some black people loyal. That's why every time in the movie, the black person's loyal. That's why they get killed every time. He's loyal. He's trying to save the white girl. Trying to save the white girl. He give his life. Give his life. Jump in front of the bullet. Give his life. Go on without me. No, don't go on without me. Don't go on without me. You know, I got this white girl out of this hole now. You fall in the hole, go on without me. Don't go on without me. Girl, if you don't get me out of this, if I get out of this, I'm going to throw you back in. You better help me. <laughs> you know, I'll be watching the movies. I'll be looking at the brother like, what's wrong with you? Go on without me. You got a bullet in the tent. Go on without me. Man, man, you better help me. Put the plot pressure. <laughs> go get somebody. Call somebody. <laughs> Gotta sacrifice myself. Man, I don't love them that much. Help me. <laughs> let me let me get done. Don't people tell you go on without me. I'm alright. No, I ain't alright. I'm hurting. Let's go. Okay, last point. Uh, okay. Uh, Jesus said, uh, verse 15, that hypocrite, uh, do not. Do it not, each one of you on the Sabbath, loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him to watering. So hypocrisy, setting aside the saint. They see set aside, he said, Jesus said, y'all set aside the law for yourself when it's convenient for you. That's the sign of that religious spirit. They'll do, they'll do stuff to tell you don't do it. Saturday, setting aside that law. The last point was, uh, in, go to Luke chapter 22 real quick. It's the last point. I'm going to close with this. Y'all getting anything out of this? These are messages you got to go back and hear again because a lot, it's a lot in it. It's a lot of points. The reason why, see, the reason why these messages sometimes you got to go back and hear it again because the Spirit of God talks to people where they are. And somebody may need something different. So even though I'm preaching one point, the Holy Spirit may make me go off over here to preach. And I don't know why am I saying this, but it's another person that needs that point. Are you seeing what I'm saying? So as well as very important that you need to hear a message again because you may have missed something. You may have missed it. You can't hear a whole message within one setting. Go to 22. Y'all there? Chapter 22. Look at verse 2. Now the last part of this religious spirit is, is murderous intent. This is what they, after all, if you really study all this out, they kept trying to trick Jesus, invite him to the house, trying to trick him up, trying to trip him up with the law the whole goal, they got so tired, they're like, look, we're going to have to kill him. Yeah. Murderous intent means this, the, the, a person with this spirit will end something. They will end something. They'll end your ministry. They'll try to end your marriage. Are y'all there? Amen. They'll try to end your children's future. Amen. They'll definitely keep new souls from receiving Christ. Amen. Yeah. Verse 2, it says, and the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him. For they feared the people. They were scared they were going to lose the people. And when people know they can't stop you, the last thing will show up is if I, can, if, 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 if I can't. Do you see how these guys are killing these women? You know why they suicide kill, shoot, killing them? That just happened out in Shabby. They just killed a girl, shot herself, killed a girl, killed a girl, shot herself. You know why? Control. 
Because the end of the end of this spirit is if I can't have you, nobody have you. If I can't lead the ministry, nobody will lead it. If I can't run this marriage, we won't be married. It's a it's it's murderous. If I can't tell the child what to do, I'll kill their future. Murderous intent. That's the end of this thing. And that's the one reason why I don't play with folk. I don't get all, I don't play games with people. Because I understand, I don't hear what you say. I hear your intention. The Bible tells me to study, discern, discern your motive, your heart. Hear people's intention. Because I need to know what you're intending. Because it may mean life or death for me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is very important. You have to know people's intention. You won't always be able to know. But most of the time, when you see something, you saw it right the first time you saw it. But you get you second guess yourself. Sometimes you saw it. You saw what you saw. When you went into that relationship, you saw it right off the top. You saw it. But you didn't want to see it. But you saw it. But you overrode it. In the back of your mind, you said, they're going to use me show sure enough. I ain't going to be able to get rid of them. And it happened. And they don't use cry praying, Lord, I don't know what I did wrong. I loved them as much as I could. Lord, what happened? And the Lord said, stop. <laughs> Remember I told you? Remember I showed you? You saw it. But you was looking at what you were going to get out of that. Wow. That you didn't realize this, that this person going to end up in murder. Me and my wife have said, this is something we ain't never understood. How people will love you. And end up within a, six months have murderous intent towards you. I mean, that's that's a, that's sometimes that's a mystery to me. How they they will say, but I understand because remember the religious spirit, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna. The same cats that told Hosanna when Jesus was riding in Jerusalem on the donkey. Them same cats all back, string him up, string him up. See, that's that religious spirit. Jump on the bandwagon when it's all good, but, they, but secretly, they don't like you. <laughs> Deserve people's motives. One of the reasons I'm telling you this, you got children. You have to protect your children. You got to discern people's motives when it comes to that. Protect your children. Know what daycare work ain't right. You heard what I said? Know the teachers that your children are around. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Know the baby daddy girlfriend. Don't y'all see how people are just murdering kids, murdering children, just doing, I mean, stuff that I'm like, Lord, Lord, I'm glad I'm saved. Because, I mean, they're, they're doing stuff, girls just putting the boy in the freezer. Just do, what? I'm the word and stuff they doing. This totally demonic stuff that people are doing. And people just trusting now, just trust their kids, just trust themselves with everybody. No, you're going to have to learn some discernment. Say learn some discernment. I'm telling you that this, 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 this is something you have to become aware of. There are people that God does put over us to help us, to bring us up. But then there are those that Satan tries to put over us, to bind us, to push us down. So that we, and, 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 and it starts to destroy the gifts, the talents, and the abilities. There are times that because some of us are so rebellious, we do need to set on, under somebody, and they need to deal with us. But those people won't kill us. They may cut us, Amen. but they won't kill us. Amen. There are those that, there, but there are some people who say, see, did you ever grow up and you heard somebody say something, and you knew, they said, they, that, that wasn't, that was with murderous intent. Yeah. Yeah. Just like your daddy, murderous intent on that word. You meant, you, meant, you meant that with a murderous intent. It's your intentions that get you in trouble with God. What you intend to do, your motive means everything. Amen. It should say my motive. Wow. You, have to, you have to say things with pure motive. Amen. Yes. Don't be saying things with them silly, funny motives. Right. Because God judges you based on your motive. Amen. Are you understanding what I'm saying? A person 
that doesn't worry about their motives is a religious person. They have a religious spirit. Because people that are truly Christians are always thinking about making sure they said something properly, they acted properly towards a person, because the Holy Spirit will constantly remind you, you know you ain't say that right. You know you didn't say that right. You know you didn't call them. You need That's how the Holy Spirit talks to us. You, 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 you better get on that phone. You need to get that right. But a person who don't care about that, they are narcissists. And they have a religious spirit where they only it's only about themselves. They don't care about how they, how, they don't care about nobody else. Amen. Don't be no preacher if you don't care about how you say things. Because you will find yourself on God's rack. Amen. Stand on your feet. I preach that way because God is a God of freedom and liberty. And you can't be free not understanding what you need to be free from. No good to come to church and get, and get all praises. <laughs> Surely you ain't good. Surely the Bible says none is righteous, no, not one. So we need to preach on issues where we live. The word is supposed to convict you. See, usually when you hear words like that, it should make you love your husband or wife more. It should make you love your children more. It should make you be able to say, you know, I can forgive them and release them. That's what the word's job is. Because we, are, because we probably have things in our heart that we don't even know there until the word light it up and say, oh. Say, oh, that's there, ain't it? I do feel that way. When you feel yourself getting angry and tight and quiet, that's, uh, yeah, that's, the, that's conviction sticking you. Amen. Saying, it's something, man. God's just after of it. He loves you. He says, he's after of it. And all he wants you to do is just acknowledge it. Repent. The Bible says we, when, we, when we acknowledge our sin, we recover our own soul out of the snare of the enemy. So when you just acknowledge your sin, say, yes, God is there. I was wrong. I know I was hypocrite on that. I shouldn't have said that. I, 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 you know, I, I, don't, I, I didn't forgive them. My heart was wrong when I thought that. Why? Because he don't want nothing in between you and he don't want, you know, he don't want nothing in between you and him. Ain't that a gracious God? How you, how you live with your wife and you hate her? You live with your wife, you hate her, and you don't know that God going to judge you for that? So he going to send you somewhere where somebody going to convict you of that hate. So you can say, you know, I need to repent before I die with hate in my heart. Amen. This, is the, this is the problem. If nobody ever, the Bible says, how will they hear us if they have a preacher? They won't know that somebody got to tell you that, hey, this is not right. Amen. And that's what conviction is. When you feel conviction, don't get mad. Think, God, you love me. You're telling me something ain't right. That's what this poking is. Something ain't right. Most of the time I'm preaching, if I wasn't, if I was listening to some of the stuff I'd be preaching, I would be at the altar most of the time myself. Amen. I don't, I ain't preaching like I know it or got it right. I'm preaching too. I'm saying, man, that's a good word. While I preach it, I said, you know, I, I need to let that go. Though. I ain't perfect up here. I'm just a vessel. Just a, just a vessel with a gift. That's it. But I'm not perfect. So I don't want you to think I'm preaching to you like I'm on some self-righteous kick. I'm preaching to you what I want, what I preach to myself because I want to be right with God amen. say amen. amen ain't that good amen. hallelujah amen come on bow your heads let's pray hallelujah 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 thank you Lord for your word and your mercy word and your mercy Amen. We're going to pray today. And, uh, you know, usually when I preach that way, I, sometimes I feel like the Holy Spirit is after something in a person's heart. Something that may be there, something that he starts hitting on your issues because he wants to bring change. God doesn't illuminate unless he's trying to change something. Why would he show you what's wrong? and not want to change what's wrong. He's telling you that you, it could be better if you let me change it. That's what conviction is. It's illumination so that you can change. So if God hit on something and you saw it, if you saw it, then he wants to bring change. If you say, Lord, I'm not sure what area I need to be changed in, what I need to be, I don't know what it is, I don't know what I need to say or do, but I know 
that you that, that you are calling me to a higher level. You're calling me. You won't change in my life. I don't want to be religious. I'm not trying to do it, just do anything to be seen. I just I want you to judge the intention of my heart that I won't change too. You lit it up, you lit, you lit this issue up in me. I see it and I want it to be changed. And I know my first step comes from acknowledging it and recognizing that I have I have shortcomings in my life. And the reason why I have you all come to the altar is because that's the way you acknowledge it. You're acknowledging that, Lord, I received your word. I recognize that, yes, that was me, God. And that's the reason why we come to the altar, is to talk to God about it. Is to say, God, I'm not perfect. You hit me right where I needed to be hit. And if you can say that, Pastor Steve, yes, I, I think I got hit on that word this morning. Come. Come. Come before your God. And we're going to pray. Hallelujah. 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 I thank God for you all because most of the time we give altar calls. This is what happens. We all want to be right. I know I want to be right with God. I want to go to heaven. I don't want to hate nobody. I don't want to be mad at nobody. I don't want nothing to get my heart against nobody. And I thank God for a convicting word that reminds me. It reminds me when I'm wrong. It reminds me when my heart is wrong. So I just want to be right with God. Come on, lift your hands up. First, look around. Just look around for a minute. Everybody's at the altar. That ought to tell you, yeah, that word was for you. Everybody heard the same thing. We all, I'm at the altar too. I'm not, just because I'm, I'm at the altar too, I'm going to say the prayer too. Because God reminded me while I was preaching of something. Yeah, I said, yeah, Lord, I got it. But that's what it's about. It ain't about perfection in that way. It's about acknowledgement. Not perfection, but acknowledgement. I acknowledge that, yes, that's where I am. Come on, lift your hands. We're just going to pray a simple prayer, a prayer of acknowledgement. And then we're going to ask him for his grace to cleanse us set us free. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I acknowledge my shortcomings, my failures. I see issues and areas in my life that are not right. I ask you to move into these areas. I can't do it alone. I'm not strong enough, but I know by your grace I can overcome. So I submit it. I submit these areas. My attitudes. My mouth. My behavior. My thinking. My mind. I submit it to you. And I ask you to take it away. You carry the burden. Father, now I ask you for your grace. Your power to overcome. To stay free. To not go back. I ask you for your power to cause me to recognize when I'm doing wrong. Give me power to repent quick, not to hold it, not to hold it, but to be a fast releaser. I want to release fast. Lord God, thank you for your mercy, for your conviction. In Jesus' name. Keep your hands lifted. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for your people. Thank you for the word that went forth. I thank you for what you're doing in their lives right now. Holy Spirit, move in the hearts of your people. Let them know that it's not about mental intellect, but it's about your spirit that sets us free. You can do in five seconds what it would take five years of counseling to do. You are that great. Lord God, move by your power. Set, set us free. The burden in our heart, set us free. The fear we, we see, the rejection we experience, set us free. Lord, fill us with your spirit till we run over with joy and peace and love. Break down every wall that we built to protect ourselves. You be our protector. You be our protector. Kill my suspicion. 
so I'm not so suspicious of everybody, but I learned to be loved and receive love. Great God that you are, give me a new walk, a new mindset. I don't want to die with this old negative mind. My life can be better. You said my end should be better than my beginning, so I receive it today. Come on, I receive it today. I'm not going to get bitter, but I'm going to be better. I'm going to be better. I'm going to be better. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Give him some praise. Come on, give him some good praise. Come on, if you're going to be better, give him some praise. I'm going to be better. I'm going to be better.